You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good afternoon. Uh, Welcome to Fishing the DMV. I am Jared Mounts, Jake's Bait and Tackle, and uh, also a boat captain for uh, Frederick County Bass, um, a local um, tournament fishing club for youth. Uh, has two divisions, a junior uh, division, which is made up of elementary and middle school age uh, kids, anglers, and, uh, and a high school division. Uh, we've had Jeremy Radford on before, and we're fortunate today to have uh, two good young guns, young sticks uh, with us, uh, both really good friends. Um, and uh, you're going to get a chance to meet them. Uh, they actually qualified for a national tournament uh, which will be coming up in, uh, I believe, July, right? July and July, July 29th and 30th, a uh, two-day tournament, uh, national tournament in Tennessee. And the way they did that, they were, uh, they actually won a Chickahominy River qualifier. Yes, sir. Um, yep. This spring, and so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna introduce them and let them introduce themselves. Uh, we're pretty excited about these two young guys and. Uh, uh, who would like to start off first? Tell us who you are and, and a little bit about yourself. My name is Cam Falver, and I fish on the Frederick County Bass Team. And Thomas and I just qualified for nationals, as Jared said. And um, we're just going to go over a couple lures and techniques that we had just gone into the Chickahominy River and went from there and kind of found fish on practice day and how we connected with that on tournament day. So before we get into Thomas, uh, Cam, when, when did you first start fishing and, and where did you start fishing? And, and just tell us. Like... Uh, I, I started fishing when I was really young, before I can even remember. And we, we've we always had this pond right next to our house that I just kind of grew up fishing. And um, my dad got me into fishing, my grandfather and my uncles. And now my brothers are into it. So that's pretty cool. What were you fishing for growing up? When I was growing up, Pretty much anything. Anything I mean, a bite? I, yeah, it was kind of just that thing that I would go out there and hope that I would catch something. That's cool. And uh, Thomas, tell tell our viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Thomas Newman. I'm in eighth grade. I go to Ferret County Middle School in Winchester, Virginia. Um, um, I just started fishing when I was like five or six, fishing in a canoe or a kayak with my father. Uh, my dad definitely got me into fishing more than anyone else. And what were you mainly uh, going after? What were you fishing for? Um, mostly bass, but sometimes we would go for bluegill and catfish, but mostly bass. Gotcha. Very good. And so, you know, I remember, you know, as a, as I got into it, um, as a boat captain, you know, Cam, I remember being down the James River for a qualifier. I don't remember what grade you were in then, maybe sixth grade. It was Fifth grade. Fifth grade, yeah. Yeah, and you were by yourself and uh, did really well in that tournament. Actually won that tournament <laughs> by himself. And uh, it, it was really cool even as a boat captain to kind of watch watch you fish. I've not fished directly with Thomas, but I know he's a good stick as well. And and he had another partner, um, and they stopped fishing, uh, Abigail and uh, Carter. And she um, stopped fishing, but she had like a five-pounder in one of your all's tournaments. Yeah, yeah the same and, one that he won. Same one. Okay, good. Yeah, down the James River. And then so when she went into other things, you guys kind of partnered up and paired up, and you've been together ever since. Yep. And so that's pretty cool stuff. So let's start off maybe just talking about the that Chickahominy River tournament. Had you all fished the Chickahominy before, and how often? Uh, We the- fished it um, the first time I ever fished the Chickahominy. I'm pretty sure Thomas did before. First time I ever fished the Chickahominy River was when our boat captain now, Corey Carter, mm-hmm. fished that out of a Shenandoah Valley tournament. Okay. Me, Thomas, and Thomas's dad went That's down. That's right. Yep. Yeah. And we, I mean, we didn't really do anything. We just kind of stayed around the dam and mm-hmm. we caught a couple wipers mm-hmm. and then we moved on. But yeah, I remember that trip now. And that, yeah. that's a good, and that's a good experience. I always talk too about like just, just being on the water. Yeah. You can't, you can do all your research you want, but until you're there, on the water and kind of see, yeah, you know what that cypress tree looks like or what what the water's doing. Like then, it, then you can start in your mind, start putting together what you want to want to throw in the future. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
And so this year, so you guys go into the tournament this year. It's a one day. Did you all have uh, any practice days for that Chickahominy? So the practice day, I took me and my dad went out on our boat, mm -hmm. and we fished other areas. Well, Cam and our boat captain, Corey, mm -hmm. went and checked out an area they knew was going to be good. Okay. Made sure the fish were still there. Mm -hmm. And after they got some bites, they left it alone. Mm -hmm. And try to figure out another pattern on practice day. And after we did figure out that that was a pattern that we continuously got on in the back of a large creek, we continued that with Thomas. We let him know, and they moved this crankbait to a whole different area of the river. Like, yep. it's just a Bandit 100? Uh, yes. Bandit 100 in a red and black color. It dives two to five feet. Yeah, and we caught fish in the back of a car large creek, and then... Texted Thomas, was like, hey, they're eating this crankbait. Yep. Mm -hmm. I tied it on. And then he tied I it on really quick. And, and yeah. then he called a three and a half. Is that right? Yes. How far were you from them? Like what, Very far. Very far. far opposite side of the river. Is yeah. that yeah. right? We were took completely different areas. So that pattern held true throughout the river. Yeah. Right. Yep. Did you find, was, was the water temperature different in each of your places? Or um, No, you, not really. No, about the same? Yeah. Pretty much same. Yeah. Interesting. So this is probably, this is the day before the actual tournament. Yes, sir. sir. All right, so you, you started putting together a couple different paths, which is a, is a good thing to do, too. You know, it's one thing to know that one thing works, but yeah, uh, find something else that works so that if on yeah. tournament day that first one's not working, you have a backup plan, if you will. And yep. uh, were you able to, how many different patterns do you think you might have been able to put together that in that uh, practice day? One or two. One, one or two. two, yeah. Okay. Yep. I mean, uh, take us through. So tournament day that morning, you know, you wake up and uh, and they do a pretty good job here with the youth. If you you've ever watched, you know, the Bassmaster Elites or you know, it's 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 somewhat like that as far as you know, they'll yeah. have a, you know, you're getting your boats on the water and then you know they Just, you have a, a pledge of allegiance and yep. national anthem and prayer and then you know a couple announcements and then they start launching you by number. Yeah, yeah, pretty fun. And yeah. you are, you're in the youth division or junior division, if you will. Yes, so it's yes, elementary, sir. middle school. You guys are eighth grade. Um, how many boats were going out? Do you remember on that? Period? On our side? 25. 24. So 25. 24, 25 yeah. boats. And, uh, and you guys launch and uh, go kind of just take us through as much as you want to. Tell them ahead of time, too. They don't have to give any deep secrets or anything like that. Uh, but anything you want to tell, just tell us kind of how that Chickahominy tournament uh, laid out for you that day. All right. So um, me and Cam, I mean, I camped out with my father in a tent. That's right. So we met Cam at the uh, boat launch, and then we launched, and Cam stayed from there. Yeah. So we kind of met up at the boat ramp. Like he said, at, we were at the hotel. He was at the boat ramp. We got in the boat. Everything was going good, and we blasted off. Well, no, we didn't. We It was like a wind delay. Or something mm -hmm. in the cove. Yeah. So we had to go to Main River mm -hmm. and launch that to yep. a year. Wow. And that yeah. was a little different, too, because I can remember putting on thinking, where is everybody? Yeah, it, that, it was different yeah. than I'm thinking, surely. And somebody texted me and said, have they already launched? And I'm thinking, well, there, I don't see all the boats. And so, but we went out to the main, out of the creek. Now, we went out of Route 5 Bridge. Um, yeah. So yep. you just kind of went out of that, that creek and, and hung a left. It was right underneath the Route 5 yeah. Bridge is where that launch occurred. That yeah. took a little while. And mm -hmm. I mean, the sun was already up, and we were like, waiting. And, and I had itching. a yeah. couple frog blow ups on practice day, mm -hmm. and they were quality fish. But we, it wasn't. It was. Yeah. It was. Missed that window. Yeah. yeah. Missed that window. And we were like, all right, I guess we're still going to run back mm -hmm. there. Ran back there, called our first fish within yeah. five minutes. Yeah. On, Thomas casted, uh, what was it? It was a wheelless Nedred. Right. That's what it was. Yeah. And Timmy, one With of Corey's friends, stitch. makes these. Okay, and so it's, it's, it's kind of stick. a almost like a a um, Texas rig um, Ned head yep. yeah. uh, style. So you were able to and we just hit it with it. a little spike it in the fire red. And I think that keyed in because we would throw that Ned rig with no mm -hmm. scent or fire red or anything. Yeah, and then we would and we would land fish. Like we got bites with it, but I'm pretty sure they were picking up the back half of it. So are you just doing that, the tail with the with the marker. Yeah, or? you yeah. would just. Okay, Just I can the, see it now. Yeah. There's that thing yep. over here. You okay. Just like the tail. Gotcha. Yep. Just the tail pieces. And all that. they are just holo sticks. Holo sticks. Holo sticks. Pumpkin. Very interesting. And so we didn't neat see. little technique. Yeah. And that's that's another thing. We didn't see any bait forage. We saw one bait ball in the hmm. in the mouth of the creek. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was that was it. I Some mean. Shad, but, yeah. yeah. 
And then, so we went back there. You got one fish in the first five minutes. Yeah. We caught our. How much did it weigh, you think? Like it was, we kept it the so whole day, right? We never caught it. That was a whole day fish. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that was like a two pounder. It was about two pounds. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And then we went way far back. And like real far, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. tried to jump in logs. We tried jumping logs. That didn't work out for <laughs> yeah. us. And then I picked up the chatterbait. I don't think we have one here. Oh, no. Yeah. I picked up the chatterbait. It was about this color. This is the chatterbait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And. I keep on throwing it, and Thomas and I try to put it down, and Corey goes, no, keep throwing it. So, we, we so I work, pick it back up, yeah. and I keep working it, and then boom, I hook one. And so we, we fished the back of the creek. Yeah. It had like three or four fish in the box, and we worked our way out, and that's where Cam brought his first three-pounder. I caught a three-pounder. I skipped my chatterbait up under a bush, and I twitched it once or twice, missed him, and I got back halfway yeah, to the boat. Yeah, I remember and you boom, saying. Boom. And it just... Thumped my whole rod. So it was between the 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 bush and halfway back to the boat. I'm yeah. pretty sure he. Hit and it, it may have bush. followed it out too. I'm pretty sure he hit it in the bush. Yeah, yeah. and and you know that's one thing I I have watched with Cam um, and I know Thomas too is is they really work on the trade. Like in other words, they really practice their casting techniques. And a part of being able to catch fish is be able to put that lure that lure presentation. And yeah. so here you talk about flipping flipping it back into the bush, you know, that that is critical yeah. between getting bit and not getting bit a lot I of mean, times. I mean, several yes, times sir, I'll yeah. miss a fish on a frog, and I'll just set the hook way too early just because uh-huh. that is like a frog bite, and you're like, oh. Yeah, you're excited. Yeah. And then you're Thomas will up. sit there and cast a wacky rig in, and he'll catch that fish. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Debbie ready for a backup. So. Yep. So that, that is pretty cool, though, too. Like, we talk a lot of times on this about team and be, yeah. able, to, be able to be a good team. That's and, another key thing. Like, if Thomas is throwing a chatterbait, yeah. I might pick up the jig because that chatterbait looks like a jig. And if a fish yeah. hits him and he loses that, I can okay. cast my jig in there and it looks like the chatterbait's falling. Okay. Yep. So. Okay. So, he caught that three-pounder. Yeah. We had five fish, like, for eight pounds. Maybe six pounds. Not very big. It was, like, seven. Yeah. And yeah. then we were, like... Totting people out in the mouth of the creek. No one had nobody had anything, anything really. Mm. So we Tori was like, Why don't we go back through and, and we went all the way the back again. We went all the way back. Started catching them on this on the way in. It, the exact same thing. And so we you went back left and, it. You fished it in the morning. Yep. You left it. You came out and you caught one in a bush and then you decided to go ahead and go, go back. Go all that's, the way back. That's that's also very good because sometimes you'll never go back to a spot. Yeah. You think there's no fish in there. And we so you back. return to a spot. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then... Um, we got back all the way back. Yeah. Cam started catching a oh lot of fish goodness. on this. We went back in this pocket and there were lily pads. They didn't... They yeah. weren't quite all the way up mm-hmm. through the water. Mm-hmm. There was low tide and it was yep. even low tide. Mm-hmm. And I started throwing mm-hmm. this bandit and my first cast back in this pocket. Boom. Boom, yeah. And it was like a pound and a half. It wasn't a big fish. We caught a lot still, of, we caught he caught a lot, a lot of one okay. and a half. And like, Thomas was throwing a jig in there. He was throwing a Cinco. And that's the, yeah. that's literally the only thing, that and a chatterbait. That's and then, the only thing they would eat. So we, we worked our way out of the really tight spot. And we got to the, like, halfway through the stretch. And I caught, and I was casting my lower onto like a, a Nothing banked. There was like nothing on it. Oh my goodness! And we there caught was and one I hooked, stump in the middle and was like, of it. Boom! And something hit it. It was big, and we got it to the boat. And it was a three pounder. Wow! It was, and we got really excited. I thought it was a five, and it was in the water. What that number was fish is fish. this? That was that was our fifth. We fifth pulled fish. that one. Yeah, we. No, no our, that was our fifth. That was our first three pounder. Yeah. We caught. Oh, or second. Sorry. Yeah. This is. And then, yeah. now we had like ten, maybe. Yeah. That that that. If we didn't land that fish, we would. Then the second. The people that came in second would have probably yeah. Got and it us sounds out. like too. It's interesting because I heard this on on the one of our adult chick tournaments too, where just you got to have your line in the water, obviously. Yeah. Because lo- some things look very fishy, and yes, you can catch it on that bush. You can catch it, but then where you, you think around. it's going to be. But don't yeah. Don't be afraid to throw somewhere like you say. There's one thing, or it, or you just call it a nothing bank, right? There's, yeah. Like yeah. there's why is yeah. it there? There's no reason for it to be there, but still cast that because it's holding on that because it, it's it may, in the different yes, stages. That's right. Yep. Very good. That's awesome. So we kept going, and I, I had this thing on, and I was, and like ten minutes later, I pitch up to this stump, and I get it snagged and pop it off, and then Boom. I did, I did another cast, and that cast it took two casts to this fish to bite. Oh yeah. And we got it, and it was another three pounder within wow. ten minutes, and that we got really excited at that point, and we got in the boat, and we we're doing pretty good. So mm-hmm. you're able to we call were, them out now. You're calling your your smallest out now at this point because yep. you got two three pounders. Yep. We had, and we, when we, 
I mean, that was kind of it for the day. We it was white capping on the main mm, river, that's right, yeah. and then we got, in no, the we back got, of the creek it was glass. We got one more two and a half, right for the end. Remember, right at the end. Yeah, right when you're throwing we left. that. Mad yeah, draft. and the uh, the times were just they were hitting, and we were like, all right, we got to get out of here. We went to Main Lake. We threw around to everything that we caught fish back in the mm-hmm. large creek. We were like, all right, we got to go back. We went back. Everybody's up. We ask everybody. Everybody around us, nobody had anything except for one high school team. Yeah, it wasn't that. And they had crazy. like two fish. Mm. And then. So you're um, feeling pretty good at this point. What time is it in this time of day? It's probably 1. Right now, probably 1.30. 1 30. Yeah. And your weigh in is probably what, 2.30? 2. 2. 2, two, two yeah. 2 o'clock. Two. Okay. And then we're like, okay, let's make this work. And we just stayed around the boat ramp. For the last hour, or I guess. Yeah. 30 minutes. And 30 the, minutes. And the thing interesting about tournaments, too, that don't fish, like, you, you feel good about what you have. Yeah. You're confident, and but yet you still don't know, especially on the Chickahominy River. Yeah. Like, how much weight is going to win this? You're right. Yeah, so, so you got to keep fishing it, because... Uh, there's multiple over fives in there. That's right. Yeah. At one point, when we had a really good bad, Cam picked up his swim bait rod. Tell us about it. Tell you use that. Um, I mean, I had... One fish bite it, yeah. bite it, and he came off, and I think it was like two and three quarters because yeah. it did come off on a big swim bait. Mm-hmm. And just on that rod, it's so hard to use it. Yeah, use it, mm-hmm. and I mean, you could you can throw the lure. It's just mm-hmm. you either have a five pounder and you don't know you have a five pounder, or you have a two pounder and you gotcha. don't know it's a two pounder. So it could have been a bigger fish. But I'm yeah. going to say it's like two and a half. Right. Yeah. Be conservative. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. Yeah. So so you finish up, uh, you come up to weigh-ins, and uh, how much weight did you end up having? 12.56. 12, 12.56. 12, we yeah. beat last year. Last year we have 12.38. Yeah, something like that. That's awesome. So, yep. you, so you win first place. And, and that was, event. I mean, it was really nerve-wracking. Yeah. When we were at weigh-ins, I mean, nobody had anything except for like two yeah, junior I teams. Heard one, uh, and somebody everyone, said, yeah. "We have a big bag," like really quietly, yeah. and we were like, "Huh?" Yeah, <laughs> started working, enough. looking around, like none of these high schoolers really have yeah. anything. And um, so, and then they said second place, then their name, yeah. and then we were like, "Yes!" And then that was yeah, that's that cool. was fun. It was awesome. Yeah, that's good. That's really cool, and because it, it is very competitive, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and we always say, too, like us being up in the north here, northern yeah. neck of the state, um, you know, sometimes you're you're a little bit of a disadvantage because yeah. um, you don't get to, you fish, got, that you don't get to fish it as much as yeah. maybe some of the other southern guys. Yeah. Uh, so that, you know, that qualifies you for, you know, a state tournament, which yes, is a two-day state tournament yep. down at Kerr, uh, Okanichi. It was three weekends from the chit. Okay, yeah. three yeah. weekends. And uh, so you, you've it been down fast. there quite a quite a bit. That is a body of water that we fished quite yeah. a bit over the years. Yeah, so you're the, a little we, more familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. but the bo- the area we fished, Dra- Grassy Creek. Yeah, Dra- we okay. went in the back of Grassy, and we were like, "This looks fishy, but is there fish in it?" Right. And we, were, we started, and it was no, the weekend before. That was the weekend before. The we went day, down. We with... caught every fish in that lake besides a yellow perch, a striper, a yes, largemouth. The first day of and practice, and a bluegill. We caught every fish in that lake. We Drum, catfish, a single bass. The first day we of didn't practice. Catch anything. Or the Second weekend. day, wow. Travis and Thomas went out. Travis Luger. Yep. And um, I went out with Corey. Travis Luger and Thomas caught two within the first, like, 30 minutes. And we were like, yep. what? Where were these fish yesterday? <laughs> and then yeah. we started to show them what they were throwing. And this is Travis Luger's jig. He customizes it. Mm. And it's just a, it's white, a white swim, swim jig, jig yep. with a Z-Man. It's, um, uh, no, it was a Zoom Speed Girl. Zoom Speed Girl, that's what it is. It was imitating the shad perfectly. We yeah. found... And a shad we body. Found a shad, and it was out of a bass that spit up. The exact, mm. same, exact thing. same size. Is that right? So yeah. Same size. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And okay. color. And color. And that's the thing about these guys too that I've noticed that I respect is is they're putting in time. You know, it's it's one thing just to pick up a rod and go. You know, a lot of times too. Oh, I got a tournament, so you show up. You know, the day before, or the day of, and you you know you barely have anything tied on, or you haven't put a lot of thought into it. But these guys aren't like that. They've Definitely done their homework um, as far as looking at maps, pre-fishing, uh, doing their research online, and uh, and then stuff like that. I'm, 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 it's very impressive that you guys are, are kind of cluing in, starting yeah. to put the puzzle pieces together and looking at, in that case, the forage um, yep. of what they're going to be eating on, matching the hatch, if you will, yeah, yep. and uh, and keying in on certain things and seeing what's working, what's not working. So, yes, uh, so you guys... 
you guys are very, you know, you do a good job with that on, on your practice. So you start to put that kind of a primary plan, secondary plan, I guess, together in practice. Uh, nice, nice way too of what you've both said, where if you can get two separate boats on the water yep. and split up, they're not fishing together on a practice day and they're mm -hmm. splitting up, covering more water, yeah. uh, bringing that information back together uh, to put, put that puzzle together. So and see if that is a true pattern. You can right. be catching them in a yeah. 50 yard stretch and then you tell somebody and they can't go catch them somewhere. Yep. It might right. not be a pattern. It might be that feeding area. Just that area. Right. Yep. That's a good point. Yep. So this, so state tournament is a two day tournament. So it's going to fish on Saturday and Sunday. Um, less boats typically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then because less have qualified for state tournaments. So there were still a couple boats though. Yeah, there was yeah. still 20, 24, 20 yeah. 24, 24 so. but not all of them showed up, so there's 22. There's right, gotcha. 20, yeah. 20. 22 or 23. Yep. So day one um, of the state tournament, kind of walk us through that. So practice day, we, yeah, went, day four. we yep. went back and we, we didn't, were like... didn't do insane. But, no, we really didn't. But we, we still but got by. we bites. still know, knew that there was fish in, in the back of Grassy. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And then, um, I mean... And then yeah. it was pretty slow on practice day, to be honest. It really was. And then tournament day was tournament day. <laughs> we went back there. My first cast, right? With the Wait, we went to the wrong cove. We went at to first. the wrong. We went to <laughs> the wrong right? his place. First, first cast. My first cast with this white pop art. Man, I hate that first cast though. You might not be superstitious, but <laughs> it's almost like if you ever hear that first cast, yeah. you catch yeah. one, it could be the kiss Just of like death. Just like a banana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. He's and, uh, catch one, catch one to pop on. My first cast, and I was done with my cast. I started reeling, and then a wee. Mm. Yeah, it was a <laughs> and two I bring pounder. Around, it was a two pounder. Yep. And I mean, we did in the. It bone. was crazy. Thomas is sitting there throwing a white swim jig. Yep. And, and not not two minutes later, I not had, a we had two more later, fish to bait. Corey's still down bait, there yeah. weighing my fish that I just caught on the pop wow. bar. And Thomas goes, and he hooks one, lands it, and Corey's like, "All right, keep your lines out for a second. Yeah, we had to catch up, and then <laughs> and then we caught up, and we kept going down that bank. We caught our five in there. Yeah, we caught five yeah. in there, and we kept going around the entire grassy. So you caught five in Within. the first area that you weren't even yeah. in the right place. Yeah, yep. yep. In other words, and then we and Corey looked around. Funny, but Corey looked like, around, and he said, "Wait, where are we? is this the right spot?" Yeah. And we said, nope, "No, but there's fish here." Me and Chambo Which is not hard to do yeah. though, either, because you can yeah. look on a map. And it's one thing looking on a map. Now, if you drop your waypoints and stuff yeah. on your boat, but when you get out on a big body, well, that's what always amazes me too. You look on a map and it, it makes sense on a map and you get out there and you see how vast this body of water is, how much, Huge. or like if you're going to run, it's it's sometimes longer than what you think. Like it's just, it's, yeah. but but that's kind of cool too. Almost a mistake that pays off for you. Yeah, it did, right. yeah. So you get five in early. Yep. And we kept going so around and we cold. We got to the, to the right fish. place. Mm. And then I cast behind the log and boom, it blows the jig out of the water. <laughs> And it blows against the log, onto the log. The, You're kidding me. Yeah, it was a, was it three? Three twelve. Yeah, something like that. Nice fish. And it's sitting there, and I'm like, hang on, Thomas. I had to reel and so I, fast. And I tried to catch up with him, and I'm on the troll motor getting to this big tree. Because it was stuck in the log. It was yeah. stuck in the log. But yeah. we got it out. Oh, my God. And Thomas you got a good, nice blow up on a big fish. I'm going. Great tournament fish, but it gets throws <laughs> it up on the log, and you're hung up now. And we thought it was like a five. That was a big fish. Yeah, we got it out and netted it, and it was like, oh, there we go. And that, and that was our that was our when we knew confident we So you, did you catch the fish? Yeah, we caught oh, yeah, it. Oh, yeah, But it went, then it got... Hung up on the log. The fish did. Was yeah. yeah, and then okay. he came We out. got it off. And then, yeah. Thomas was throwing fluoro. I don't Holy know how that fish smokes. didn't come off. And I'm sitting there pepper. throwing braid. And I don't know. I, me, I think my strength is better with braid because I can sit here and do this. Yeah. And all my hook set needs to be is this because braid has no stretch. Right. But with yep. him with that fluoro, he's sitting there doing this and his rod's back here when he's trying to set the hook. And I'm like, Thomas, we're yeah. I like the fluoro because yeah. when I was, it was called the Alabama More shake. Action. And you could do it like this and it would have more action than a what's it Walla, called alabama shake, shake yeah. the alabama shake yep yep okay. you just reel right under surface like this you see every fish that eats oh my it. goodness it's the best feeling in the world that was second day yeah i tell you you know just watching you too like when you just explain that like you can just see that's what i love about this stuff is you can just see the, the excitement in yeah. your eyes like yeah. how exciting that is to, to fish that it technique. was fun it was insane so he's throwing his weight bait he misses one. Oh yeah i threw this little uh, I think it was a bandit. Yeah, it was a bandit. And it was this little wake bait, like this big, and I'm throwing it, and the fish goes, misses one. Boom. Yep. And I miss him, 
and we cast Thomas it, cast in there like nothing. five times. Thomas cast in there nothing. And then we Thomas like, cast in there. Boom. We we pass it, and then I get in the back and I put a last flip in there. I was like, there wasn't even a brush pile or a tree or anything. I was like, let's Another just cast there one more time, and then boom, I got him on the swim jig, and he he didn't help us, but it was cool still. It yeah. was cool though to see that in a tournament. When yeah. normally you can go out to a pond, and that rarely happens, but when it does happen in a tournament, it's, it's so just cool. a different feeling. Yeah. No, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. And you're catching fish, which is always good. Oh, that was about we it. We hammered on that day. Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of tight coals that we had, though. Yeah. Like, okay. You had, used had the, one that, the little the balancer. Yeah. yeah. That was like 198, and one was like 199. Okay. And then yeah. we had one that was 199 and 199. Yeah. And then we had to use the balancer, mm-hmm. and one was just a little bit more tippy. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we had like twelve coals that day. It was insane. Yeah. And then day one was the, awesome. Yeah. Day one we felt really confident. Day one we were sitting in second. Yep. How much we weight? Felt, uh, ten ninety eight. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Ten ninety eight. Ten ninety eight after day one. How far are you behind the leader? Uh, half pound. Uh, I, think. I don't know because they had a no. Yeah, half pound. Or three quarters. Yeah. yeah. And you had somebody behind you too in third place. Pretty it close. was pretty close too. Yeah. They were like pound. Yeah. Pound. And then second day. And then you, so you get into this point, like okay. you're. We are so and, nervous. You're so, and you're yeah, so we tight were, that yeah. still anybody can win it. Like you're yeah. in a good position. Somebody can catch a three pounder. You can, and... you can take over first, but third can also jump to first. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you could drop back. I mean, you might even, I don't know where fourth was, but you catch the right fish. Yeah. And if the, the leaders don't, like you can quickly have a, a position change here. So uh, you go back to the hotel, you grab something to eat or whatever. What are you kind of, what's going through your mind as far as, so this pattern set up, you wrecked them the day one, like you feel good about it. What What's going through your mind as you get ready for day two? What are we going to do if they don't bite? That's, okay. That's, so you, and you that's were thinking what, about that. My brain was like. Your we brain were, was already thinking about yeah. it. If they don't, yeah. like if it works, great. But if it doesn't, what's the next step? Yeah. Yeah. Thinking, that's that's we, really good. We really didn't have a second Strategy. What, <laughs> what did you come up with? I was like, because on practice day in other creeks we could get like a we couple just kept bites rocks because, on rocks, yeah. Because we that's our strength. A shaky at head, yeah. But it's that wasn't rock. really gonna do that. I don't think. No. Uh-huh. But luckily, it kept working day two. It kept yeah. working day two. So yeah. you get out day two now. I'd heard too. Yeah. Um. I, I, I stayed back. Um. I was not I, I feeling too a, hot. Yeah, you weren't feeling too hot. Um. On day two, you wake up, and this this happens too. I mean, you you I wake have up migraine and I headaches, see out of, right? Out of my right eye, I couldn't yeah. see out of my right eye. You have migraine headaches, yep. like you 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 have to. Yeah. And that can anybody's ever had those? It's not easy. Mm-hmm. Um, and we get to the boat ramp, and yeah. I'm like, I gotta. Go You're not to feeling these. it, man. Yeah. I gotta go to the bathroom, Thomas. I'll be back. Yeah. And I get, I get really nervous. I mean, really scared. I, yeah. I was sick, and I did get sick, and uh-huh. then I up. come back down. And mom's already down there. She's like, well, are you okay? Because she can always tell. Yeah, when, she can tell her son when her son's yeah. not feeling well. And he's trying and then, to hide it and, or, you know, maybe not even hide it. Just she knows something's not right. And I held it out for like three more minutes. And then I was like, nope, I got to go back. And we still had a little while. Yeah. And then I was like, all right, I got to go back. And I went back up to the restroom and I got sick again. Mm. And then I came back down and I, I felt I felt a lot better after that. Mm-hmm. And then we got to the spot and I took a 15 minute nap. So you so you roll out, you launch, and yeah. you get to your. Is, did you go back to the same spot yeah. you started with the first day? Not no. the wrong code, but you the went to the right code. Right this time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're not feeling well, so you're going to take a little He's fifteen minute, you know, thirty minutes. Yeah. Comes in there napping. Yeah. And Thomas is... So Thomas picks up the rod. So I pick up this. Nothing. Nothing. I lost a, a ten incher. Like that's all. That's not good. We fished through the whole code we caught ton in yesterday. Nothing. Nothing. And your partner, he's he's sick. taking a I'm nap. I'm sick. And and t- I can hear anything. Thomas it's... in the background, in the back of my head, like, oh man, I hope he's okay. Does it? And it does work on you mentally. Like if you've never yeah. been in that, it's different too when you're out just pleasure fishing. But when you're fishing and you're trying to take over a lead and yeah. you know qualify for a national tournament, that type of thing. So, so then what do we? Do? I don't know. I woke up okay. and we moved. We I moved. don't know where yeah. we went. We moved. Oh, I know we did. Okay. So we went to a main lake cut. A main cut. lake cut. Yeah, that's what we did. And I missed one on my swim jig. A big one, too. You lost one, I think. I lost one on a holistic. Yep. And we still don't have anything yet. So yeah. you're back in the game, though. You've taken we go to a spot. I'm back. You're back up. Yep. And... Yeah, he's back up. Yep. All right. We go to a different spot that we were at yesterday, but didn't fish it very thoroughly. Really? And I catch one, and I actually slapped Corey in the face with the fish. Oh, my goodness. When I, uh, the Cor- fish? Corey went, ooh. Because <laughs> I, I both flipped it because it was running right to me, and I went, boom, and I hit him in the face. 
And that was the first one. It was only 12 inches. <laughs> that was that was, that was was an interesting one. And I, I look back and all I see is... Thunk. <laughs> and then you got one. And then I caught one at the very end of that cove yep and then our 12 inches so then we move all the way back in that one that was our that was our cove that's so it. you're sitting yeah. with two or three at this point only two two, two. Yeah. two fish and then so i cast a swim jig and hadn't caught a fish the whole day on this and i'm really scared and worried that we're not going to do it and i cast it because he snagged and we're going up to get it and i pitched into a little like opening and boom i saw it and it, and it was a really big Faux spawn female. Yeah. Okay. She, she only weighed two thin. pounds in the thin. And she would have been, been like three, three and, and a half. half. Wow. Yeah. And we both flipped that, and we got it out, and then you caught. I caught one. Yeah, we were at three fish, and then we went back uh, to an, another cove in Grassy. Yep. He caught a two pounder. Yep. What was that on? Uh, that was on a hula stick in the middle of a bush. I was. Yeah. I was snagged. And um, came off of the snag and boom. Yep. And I was like, I'm, I'm snagged again. Whoa. And, and that's another I important thing too. Don't I, I? I'm guilty of this sometimes. If you get snagged or you got a bad cast or whatever, of just giving up on it just because you got snagged. Like in in like they talk about grass all the time too. Coming yeah. through grass, don't keep stay on it because sometimes when you're bouncing off of something or yeah. coming off of something, it reacts. You can to get it. bit. So always staying focused. Yeah, you know, even after because with it comes that shadow, it's it's not even something that looks like it's fallen from the sky. It's right. something. It could be a shad that's just held on a branch that's that right. had pulled off, Should and be. now it's out there swimming. That's right. Okay. Well, I forgot we caught one 14 inch. I forgot about in that same cove that yeah. I caught the first 14 inch. That was after the big pile of bushes yep. that we saw those gar in. So we had five fish with his last fish he caught on the hula stick, and we get in the back and. <laughs> And we have like I'm 30 minutes there. left. 30 minutes left in the tournament. So now you, when you get to that point too, you're getting kind of an account down. Yeah. Like, uh, so you change your style at all of fishing once you get in that last 30 um, minute mark. No, not really. We didn't even change that much. Except yeah. For, I mean, you're keeping an eye on the clock, but you're going to, you're yeah. going to stay with your same presentation yeah. that's been working. So for you. we get in the back and I'm like, Thomas, let's get behind these bushes. Nobody makes this cast. Thomas. Wait, you talked about that one you caught on that first. Remember? In the middle of the tree? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was so, I cast yeah. in this one? Yeah. So, I cast, and the swim jig's already halfway back in the boat. I'm sitting there reeling it, and whoa. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> And I saw it nail it. And I gave slack into him and said it, which I shouldn't have. Because when I put a sl slack into a fish, I feel like, especially with the swim jig, it's heavier in the front. So, if that fish has ha got it this much, and you put slack into it, that head's just going to fall, and the fish yeah. is going to drop it. I put slack into him and caught him. It was like a three pounder. Yeah. And um That was a bit of so that, that day. was the biggest coal that uh, day. Yep. So and with thirty with less than thirty minutes to go yeah, in the tournament. And that felt really good. I got yeah. super That's excited. A good fish, yeah. And we didn't do any good on the way back. And then when we got in the back, way back back. there was just this giant yeah. pile of bushes. There like, was trees. And there was everywhere. space behind it. Yeah. And there was space so behind he brought it. Us there was back. a gum tree. Yeah. And he cast it, and I was like, why don't you cast it right there? But he already had pulled it out and cast it over here. I was like, I'll do it. And I did it, and we pulled it up off a <laughs> branch. It looked like a five-pounder. It went, whoo. And I said to Hutch, you were like, oh, it's huge. Yeah, and we, we both screamed, five-pounder. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got it to the – I both flipped it so hard. Remember that? Yep, and then I WWE wrestled it on I the back of the boat. I both flipped it so hard, it came flying <laughs> – Hit the, the back the that. swim jigs up here and the fish is down here and I huddle on top of it. So Thomas, what made you what made you dial in on that particular spot? Nobody uh, makes that cast. Because I don't yeah, no one makes it. And there was space right here and then a branch shot out and came up. Mm. And there's a little opening where I could put yeah. Jed perfectly. And you put it perfectly in there, in that yep. spot, in that hole. Yep, and that's where you went. And was. that's so and you know, and again, I just can't say enough like that that Pinpoint accuracy, but also looking as you're fishing, you're looking for those spots where that fish might be laying. Yep, yeah, an and it's kind of cool. Like he get, he gave you first shot at it, and you you and went like, somewhere yeah. else. So he said, "I'll take it." And uh, wow, that that is really cool. Yeah, always be looking for your opportunities yeah. while you're fishing. Just if wow. you're in the back of the boat, you get backward angels into yeah. other that, places. The front can't hit. The front can go. sit there and cast like this, 
And then you look back and you're like, wait, there's a nice there's opening. a root right there. That's fascinating, Thomas, there. because in what you just said, if you're a back back angler, don't like too many times we think about you know we're back being back boated or whatever, yeah. and we we look at it the wrong way. You're saying look for opportunities that only you can get, yeah, that only you can get. And so instead of be always looking on the positive, so okay, so he is fishing this fishy stuff over here. What do I have to throw to? Yeah. With yep. a little bit different angle, kind of like when you were talking about the do nothing bank or the nothing bank, same type of concept. What doesn't look like, and I know of other stories, of guys doing the same exact thing of just throwing out in the middle of nowhere, not relating. We always want to throw to something, but even if you don't, go ahead and still fish that water because it may produce. Man, that is really awesome. You guys know, you guys realize too, you're on a higher level. Like you're young, you're going to be going into high school, but your your level of thinking right now is is on a higher level than a lot of people are. So if you're watching this, uh, I'm telling you, you can learn something from these kids. I mean, they're they're soaking up the information, the knowledge, and, and they're not just soaking it up, but they're going out and applying it. And what you, you're all paying attention to details on the water that, you know, I can only imagine what kind of angler you're gonna be as you grow up and, and uh, so, so you got a for now five pounder in the boat? No, it was, no if we, we it thought was, it was. Five. It wasn't. We thought five. it was. No, five, we got so four. nervous, but it, it was, was like a three and a half. It was, yeah, all right, still good fish. It was a really right, good really fish good for fish. that lake, and and then we had to leave, and we get to the boat. So ramp. how much time was from the time you boat that one to fifteen you, you minutes? Got about fifteen minutes to, and it was like a ten minute run. Ten minute so. run, you got fifteen minutes to weigh in. We got so. there with like three minutes to spare. Yeah, things get pretty exciting at that point, don't they? I mean, like you're getting ramped up. We're shaking like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So we both look at each other up, at the same time. You're gonna make time. the boat ride. Yep. Yep. Still not sure. Is it enough to? Yeah. Do know, it. Yeah. Because it was it. smaller than the day before. Because it was nine thirty-eight. Mm -hmm. And I was. I mean, I'm shaking and like I'm yeah, like praying. That was. Boat better work. Don't break yeah, down. Yeah. Don't break yeah. down. You gotta get back. Don't want a penalty. We gotta go back. Yeah. So you make the run. Uh, roll up there. Get your fish up. And uh, where where's it end up putting you? Uh, we we thought we were. We done. thought we were done. Yeah, because we we this were team done down, in, like like we third, were yeah, we're gonna yeah. make it. Yeah, because this team weighing like fourteen and a half pounds. And then I kept forgetting my mom like keeps the weights in her yeah. phone, and then I always asked her like, "What? What's where are you at? What, yeah. yeah, where are we?" And she always said second, and I was like, "Okay." And it got to high schoolers, and she said, "You're in second. And then they started announcing from fifth to first, and um, when, they when said third, third place. The they, they said sense. the weight, and then yeah. we were like, we knew it. We had yeah, it. You had second. That's yep. cool. And we, everybody looked at us like Mr. Mounts, Miss Mounts, yep. my mom, my dad, Mr. Newman, Corey. Corey. We looked at each other. It was, it was, like, it was awesome. I'm yeah. so excited. Yep. Yep. That is really cool. So you finished second at the state tournament, and that qualifies you for the national tournament. Before we get into that, kind of what, so what is at that point right there, what you just explained? And you guys are working really hard to get to that point. Yeah. Um, what's kind of going through your mind? What's what? What are the emotions that are kind of rolling? Through <laughs> we your did mind? it. Was... Like, what just happened? And yeah. kind of like we just did that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. So excited. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. That was... I really enjoyed it. I've never yeah. been that excited before. I've never had that feeling. I mean, it's a different feeling. You'll sit there and kill a big buck, okay. and then you go out there and you get second in states, and, and you're like, it's ten you, times better. It's not that. Exactly. It's not that right. feeling. It's it's a better. It's, it's a different feeling. Yeah, that is awesome, guys. I tell you, I'm really proud of you guys. And I think you know, we look back. Jacob Neff and Hayden Hedrick, they qualified uh, for a national tournament, uh, the same place that you guys are going to be going. And then you know, Jeremy last year, you know, he was first in points overall. Yeah. Uh, he and his yeah. partner Will, um, and they qualified for the national tournament. And so uh, you guys, are the third team that I know of, there might might be more that I'm forgetting. Apologize if I do, but. <laughs> you know, third team um, that will go on and represent. Uh, throw out, shout out to David Tavner. He had big fish yep. in yes, sir. his that division. Awesome. Uh, back to the Chick tournament, uh, Clark Kelly had a big fish that was a big yep. um, that was on nice. the Chick. So, you know, our team's doing really well, yes, uh, finding success out there. And it doesn't success doesn't always happen every tournament. And that's mm -hmm. the thing, too. You guys have put a lot of time in, and we've, we've highlighted two specific tournaments uh, but you've been fishing a lot of other qualifiers. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you come up and you've had success, you know, top three, top we're, five. We got third in the state we got third two, two years before. Yeah. yeah. And then and last that year hurt, we got yeah. ninth, and that really that was, put a setting Last in year us. was ninth, you say? Yeah. yeah. So it, it two was years bad. ago, third, third to ninth. So you're tasting it, though. You're like, man, we're so close. And we Thomas and I are kind of like, dude, this is our last year of juniors. We this is our it. last tournament. Still last chance. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, except for high school, but yeah, last I'm kind of getting cold chills because yeah, that's and that's the and I we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. So, uh, national tournament, Carroll County Reservoir, yes, and I think it's Huntington, Tennessee. Yep. Right. Yep. It's it's very small. Very it's small reservoir. Thousand acres that they're trying to fit a hundred boats. On. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be tight. It's gonna be tight. You're gonna Fishing be casting over, into somebody's yeah. mm-hmm. boat. And you guys have already have you started planning for that? Yeah. Yep. So, I'm very excited. Yeah. 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 We've we been looking at videos. We've done a lot of research already. Okay. It we definitely need to like do more, a, though. So. I wouldn't even say. Yeah, like a slower lake. It's not like you're up there pitching in bushes and mm-hmm. stuff. It looks mm-hmm. like you're going to be fishing rocks and points. Offshore. And yeah. offshore stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And are you able to change up your, let's say, style of fishing where, you know, yeah. you know what your preference is, you know what you like? I you feel like feel... we have strength in yeah. fishing offshore, though. We're going to have to, yeah, figure out yeah. what, what to do. It's going to probably be offshore, I think. Yeah. And how? What are some ways that you're going to be able to do that? You think to kind of prepare for that? Maybe talk different to people. Style? Talk we can to practice can... other lights. Okay. It's like we're going to do a Jens Randall next weekend. Yeah. Good. We and can... it's the same size as Carroll yeah, County. Yeah, exact awesome. same size except. So we can kind of break down that lake. Yeah. And like we would on Carroll County. That's great. That that really, I mean, again, that's so great because I, I remember Nolan Miner too talking to him. You know, and he was he was a uh, first in the state, second in the nation you know, fished West Virginia, but he talk, says the same thing where fishing different bodies of water, it might not be that same body of water. You can't go the, whatever it is, 14 yeah. hours right now to fish that. It's not your backyard, but what can you yeah. do the next best thing, closest thing to, to fish that offshore uh, and start dialing in on that and Just, hopefully that can pay off. I mean, get out there. I mean, it's the easiest thing now. You can get on Google Maps and look mm-hmm. up yep. Carroll County Lake. Mm-hmm. And the TATS Maps. They can show you points it's crazy mm-hmm. like you yeah. can look on google maps contours. and see points mm-hmm. and contours and depths it's pretty mm-hmm. cool what that people can awesome. make these days yeah and people show you stumps and brush piles and lay downs Rock and piles. a lot of people you'll talk to somebody just like travis luger mm-hmm. i mean you'll go out to kerr lake and he can break that lake down mm-hmm. for you mm-hmm. you learn so much with people. Yeah. yeah yeah with different people you can definitely learn look at something and you, they look at it totally different, and then you start looking at it mm-hmm. that way. And Learn like, from their strengths. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so well, the next thing, too, I'm thinking is, like like you guys referred to, you're, you're moving up next year. Uh, you'll have this tournament, and the next season you're going to be in the high school division. Yeah. yeah. Now, in saying that, now, it is a step up. Um, more boats. I mean, they would average yeah, 65 to 75 boats, you know, yeah. in any given qualifier. Um, some good talent, some good sticks. But now in saying that, you guys, like you said before, you know what your weights are and you know where you fall in. You might have been sixth or seventh in the high school div- in a high school division. We were six. We were you were six. six. Yeah. So there's no doubt you guys can compete. Um, and that's the other thing we talk about fishing, which is so great. Like you guys couldn't go out and 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 be a middle linebacker on on a freshman football team. <laughs> uh, but now Thomas runs. You're a runner. You know yeah. he's he's. Uh, been competitive you know yeah. with that and so and won right did you win you won was it a state uh it or was middle school it was a bit invitational i okay. won i won the county championship uh yeah and so a lot of meets yeah so that's awesome but but to the point of like you you're going to be able to go out and because of your mind and your skill set you're being able to pinpoint your cast and things like that you're gonna you can go out and compete uh at that next level oh yeah um yep Anything else about Frederick Frederick County Bass in, in that tournament before we kind of move on to maybe some other things that you guys like doing in fishing? I mean, they give us a lot of opportunities. It definitely bass, yeah. makes you look at stuff that you would never. I mean, without all this, we obviously wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. And then and that's another thing. Just very thankful for yeah, Jake Spain Capital, especially, mm-hmm. and all of our sponsors. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that's good, Thomas. And we got a, a website, frederickbass.com. You can check it out there. And, and at Thomas's point, there's a lot of community sponsors that have, have uh, pitched in and and you know, we get their logo on the jersey mm-hmm. and stuff, and those that, that money goes uh, to each qualifier at cost. There's a lot of expenses yeah. that go into the travel expenses, hotels and food and gas, fuel. Oh, yeah. And then our, our boat captains too as well. And you know, the we have several boat captains that don't. Their boat captain, Corey Carter, shout out to him too. Yeah, thank he you. puts oh, yeah. in a lot of time uh, with so you guys. Takes out time from his weekend and his family yeah. to That's help right. us. That's right. And his daughter was one that fished with Thomas before, and she got out and she's doing volleyball and stuff. So for him to stick with with that and, and keep yeah. doing that, and um, and it's you know we have several like that that are volunteering their time, you know, in their boat, 
and to take these guys out fishing. And so it's good that you guys are able to give them credit too and yep. and realize, you know, you couldn't do it uh, by yourself uh, no without the help yeah. of no even your parents. I tell the guys all the time too, yeah. thank your parents for giving you that opportunity yes. uh, to be able to fish and oh, uh, yeah. fish competitively. Cause, yep. And I can't tell you how many people, we had them in here again on Saturday, these old timers are like, man, what I wouldn't <laughs> do to to be able to have yeah. this opportunity when I was your age. And so it's pretty cool that you, you guys are, you know, taking advantage of that. Yep. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, what else uh, you guys fish, not just competitively, you guys like to fish too in your personal yeah. time. <laughs> and so have yeah. you all, let's start with maybe that first story you all were telling me that you found a new place even this weekend, yesterday. So Tell us a little bit about how that went down. Thomas and I met yesterday at, the college and then we went to my house and we're sitting there fishing my pond that I fish every day yeah. and <sighs> Thomas looks up and he sees this creek and he questions it and he goes where's that come from and th there's a bigger yeah. drain off and I go oh there's another pond up there it's just an old cow pond and it's not even a half a foot deep yeah and I was like oh I bet you there's fish in there I said I don't know but I guess we'll try <laughs> call dad he goes yeah go ask him and yep. we go, we knock, knock on the door. First of all, we, we hit the jump the, well, fence. Well, we had to jump a fence, walk across these people's field. I think we're going to get shot. Thomas yeah. is like, no, we're not getting shot. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, Thomas if we do. Thomas worried. He can run faster than you. Like, <laughs> That's exactly what he said. They might start shooting, but That's I'm exactly what he said. And I was like, all right. We knock on the first house. And no one answers. we knock on the first house. This TV, you can hear halfway down the driveway. <laughs> and it's just, and we're sitting there. Hitting the door, and we can see two people sitting on the couch right there. It's hilarious. And they're just not phased. And we were like, all right, let's go ask this other house that's up here halfway down the driveway. And it, it was her son, I guess. Okay. And we go, hello, do you know who owns this pond down here? And he goes, yeah, it's my mom's. You can fish it. I'm like, we didn't even, didn't have to even ask. ask. He just saw our rod. <laughs> and yes. we were like, oh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And we went down there and caught four in 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. It and it got awful. dark, and we were like, let's get out of here. Man, well, we got out cool. of there, and yeah, that was pretty cool. Oh, awesome. well, that, we've talked about that before too, of asking permission. You guys went about it the right way, yep. and you asked permission, and uh, the worst they're going to say is no. Yep. Yeah. And so, uh, or they start shooting, just make sure you're faster than your buddy. <laughs> and uh, but that's pretty cool that you guys ventured out to to uh, explore a little bit on that. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit more about um, you know, Cam. I know you did a trip to Florida last year. What'd you go after? Um, we went down to Florida. And I didn't know we were going to Florida. And um, it was over the summer. We went down there and we went to the airport. Dad and mom didn't tell us where we were going. We got to the airport and they said we're going to Florida. And we, we were all excited. Mm -hmm. We got to Florida the first night. We kind of stayed back because we got there late. And um, so we got there and we went to Walmart and we got a little fishing rod. And I was like, what's that for? And that's a, just off of the canal, off of the back, because there was a saltwater canal, mm -hmm. and I caught 80 catfish oh my that gosh. week. It was fun. And you put your rod down on the dock, and you loosen your drag, and it just goes, <laughs> <laughs> and then you pick it up, and it's it was fun. I caught, like, 80 catfish that weekend. And then the next the next day after the first night, Dad and I went out catfishing out off the dock, um... We're sitting there watching Scott Rose fishing, which he's a peacock bass guy down in West Palm Beach, Florida. And dad's like, oh, man, this would be fun. And I'm like, yeah, pro it really would. And then mom goes, well, you're going peacock bass fishing today, tomorrow. And I, I was really excited. Yeah, yeah, and I was really excited and kind of shocked. And then we went out peacock bass fishing. We got, like, these – two and a half, three inch minnows. Mm -hmm. And they would sit there and they just scatter across the top of the water. And you just see this three pound peacock bass just come up and inhale it. It was awesome. I mean, they would eat anything. I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was really cool to just be able to go down there and catch fish, catfish in salt water, mm -hmm. which was pretty cool. And then go to this little Creek and put a bass boat in it, and it's eight foot deep. Mm -hmm. And you can sit there and catch 50 peacock bass. Oh, that's pretty cool. It was really cool. That's awesome. Thomas, you uh, you had a neat story. I think last year you and your dad were up in New York fishing. Yep. And you were coming back. Tell us a little bit about you're in a motel, and, and who'd you run into there? So we had a boat, 
and our trailer broke, so we couldn't use it. So we had these kayaks. So we went up to uh, the St. Lawrence River to see if we could get a little bit of kayak fishing in. And on the way there, we drove by a motel, and I saw this bass boat, like, fully, uh, I guess, wrapped, wrapped yeah. in a car. And I was like, that's Jacob Wheeler. And we stopped and turned around, and he wasn't there, but his uh, another pro fisherman, Dustin Connell, was there. And we met him, and we talked to him for, like, 15 minutes, and he told us, like, a place to go and see if we could launch our kayaks there. And we did, and that was super cool. He gave me a hat and some, we call it, a net gator, I think. And so we did that, and then we we got reservations for the hotel. And it's right on St. Lawrence. So we got there, and we, um, uh, we call it, parked and got our hotel all uh, mm-hmm. set in with our clothes and stuff. And I go out back to try to catch some smallmouth. And there's Dustin Connell on a lawn chair with his uh, family, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I catch one while my dad's talking to him. And then my dad goes back in the house, and Dustin leaves, and I'm still fishing. And I walk back up, and there's Jacob Wheeler. <laughs> <laughs> and I had like, hey, Jacob Wheeler, I'm a, one of your fans, and I, uh, nice to meet you. And he l- let me on his boat and gave me some lures and – made a, a little bit of a YouTube video and I was in it. So it was really cool to meet him and have that experience to see how he was really nice and very like, uh, not like boastful or anything. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Very down to earth. And that, when I heard that story and, and he's right, you can go on one of his YouTube um, videos and you can, and you're actually in the boat. Yeah. He goes over to his truck and he, he pulls out some stuff and, and he's talking to you. And I just, and we ran into him down at ICAST and, and I made a point to say to him, I mean, he sees people all the time and it's, but I just, I think that's so important. I really respect the fact that, you know, here he is an old, you know, pro fisherman angler at the top of his game, but to take the time with you, you know, uh, and go, go over different things and fishing or whatever, and just talk to you. Yeah. I mean, I think is, is really awesome. Um, be staying in a small motel like that and, yeah, yeah, you know, that type of thing. And so that's a pretty cool experience. And, pretty cool. and that's, what's so great about this industry too, is, and don't be afraid, just like you did, don't be afraid to go up and talk to them and carry on a conversation with them. Yeah. And a lot of times people are like, Oh, I don't, you know, just go up and start talking to them and you, you know, come to find out cause you guys kind of share the same passion as well. Yep. So, um, I want to throw out to, uh, Isaac Walton, you do a little bit of fishing at Isaac Walton here locally as well. What do y'all, what do you catch there? Uh, we catch very assortment of fish. I mean, you can go out there and throw a trout magnet under a float and catch a buttload mm-hmm. of crappie and mm-hmm. some couple trout. Um, uh, You're couple, throwing the fly rod around a little bit there too. Yeah, I call it a couple golden trout mm-hmm. on the fly rod and a big mm-hmm. yellow perch. Um, then a couple weeks ago, we went there and throwing this crankbait, I caught like six two-pounders and then dad caught... I think it was two or three fish over a pound and a half and then make this one cast to the corner of the dock and five feet away boom and it was like five pounder it wow. was it was really cool now your dad had one though what last my year my dad that had one last year in fall that was nine eleven yeah it was no, it was it a was, horse it was big it was big a little yeah. shy of double digits yeah. yeah but it was a big 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 bass we caught that on a jackhammer on mm-hmm. a bed that he yep. didn't even see there you go. Cool. Yep. Um, Thomas, um, another one that I think is really cool, and I need to go back and watch this YouTube video of you. Your dad sent it to me. You and your dad went on a trip um, in New York, and you canoed for, yep. I believe it was 100 miles. Yeah, to talk 96, just, yeah. 96 miles. So just talk briefly about that, because I think, again, this this is just a, another cool experience um, of fishing. Yep. So um, we hear about this in called the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, and – I have three sisters, I mean, two sisters, and uh, every time one of us turns 12, he takes us on a 12-year-old trip to anywhere we want to go. That's awesome. So my sister went to the Grand Canyon, and the other one went on a bike trip in North Dakota, and I wanted to go to Newton, so we went to the Northern Forest Canoe Trail, and it was really cool. I mean, you go from lakes, big lakes, uh, tiny trees, small ponds, it, through everything, and it's so awesome. I caught my PB smallmouth 
that trip. How big was it? Uh, they have a good scale, but it yeah. was 20, 20 inches, maybe 20 inches, 21. Yeah. yeah. It was really nice. And then uh tried my first pike. That was awesome. Um, I caught a, a nice large mouth. It was awesome. I love canoeing because you can get to places no one else can get to. Because mm-hmm. you can't go in a tiny little tree to the bass boat. And you're in an area where there's no roads or, like, you, nope. you pretty much just so rural in the wilderness there. Uh, you're camping alongside the water. And, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. You do portages. You take out your canoe. You put on some wheels. And you take it to another lake or another river. Mm-hmm. And it was awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. That is cool. Let's finish up talking about, uh, you say you're going to, um, is it Jen- Jennings Randolph? Jennings or? Randolph. Yeah. Yep. So, um, in West Virginia, it's an if you've never been there, another another really nice lake, deep clear lake. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, you guys have fished it before. Yeah, last year we went there and caught twenty some. More than that, we was, caught like yeah. thirty some. There's a lot of smallmouth. Yeah. I mean, they're not huge, but they're so much half. fun. Yeah. It, I mean, and that could be a tough lake to fish because it is so deep and yeah. so clear. That's yep. why we go. There's a certain, certain time, time of, of year, year, around mid May. Okay. Yeah. And you can you can hammer go out there them. and hammer them to three to five feet. Yeah, um, sometimes you let them do a big one. Yeah. Our boat captain Tori was out with his friend, mm-hmm. and they caught it six and a, and a half. Oh, I thought it was seven. It was about seven oh, pounds. Okay. Smallmouth. Wow. There is definitely big fish potential in there, and you're right. Yeah. You'll catch a lot of little fish, but Every yeah. once in a while. There's, there's big fish in that lake. Yeah, it's awesome. You got a you said Ned Rig. Ned Rig. Yep. Ned Rig. I caught one on an A Rig, which is Yeah, really cool. it was cool. He's there in Alabama Ridge and like caught like a 14 inch or was crazy. How far down did you let it sink? I we had, no idea. we had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, that was kind of the point where hey, we were just out there. The next cast, he lost it. It was fun. It was horrible. Next <laughs> cast, I lost an A rig. Oh, no. Yeah, it was fun. Though. But I'll be throwing it next weekend. I mean, you slam them. It's so cool. Yeah. Well, it'd be cool just to see fun. how you guys do, uh, you know, this particular trip up there. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anything else? Uh, if you guys aren't fishing, what else? What do you like to do in your spare time? Fish, fish, fish. Some hunting. So you guys I, both hunt. You both deer hunt. Yep. Yep. I've heard stories too. You guys going squirrel hunting <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, you guys have come, become good friends. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Is this, this is how you all met through this this club. Um, yeah. We met at the James River. I was insanely okay. hot. Like my jeans, I was sweat. Sweat was going down my legs. And Thomas <laughs> comes over and he goes, "Are you okay?" <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I'm just hot. Just I was really quiet back then, and um, it was funny. I mean, I didn't really realize that that was kind of like something that I could be almost on a leaderboard for. I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So going, right, so going into that, you didn't really know what to expect. You didn't yeah. know the expectation. You didn't know it was your first time. Yeah. And so, um. But yeah, it's pretty cool that yeah. you know just by even because that can be hard too sometimes when you're young to kind of get out of your comfort zone if you yeah. will. And I don't know if you were out of your comfort zone, but um, I know Thomas has kind of a quiet personality too. But it's you know you guys that goes to show too if you go and try something and do something if you don't like it, no big deal, nothing lost. But if you may yep. find if you, if you go do and try it, in this case you guys have fallen in love with it. Yeah. yeah. And and it's pretty much all you you guys live and breathe it. Yeah, yeah. that's all I think about. Especially. Yep. I mean, I'll be curious to see how far you guys go, and I'm anxious to see. Like I said, you guys make the step. You know, wish you luck down at uh, nationals. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. And uh, and then making that jump next year into the high school division, and yes, then sir. just see what you know what opportunities come thereafter. Yep. Uh, but along the way, you'll have a lot of memories, a lot of build a lot of relationships. Mm-hmm. And yep. So. Uh, yep. We're glad to have you guys on the team. And just, you know, again, let everybody know, frederickbass.com. Uh, you can check out our Facebook page. And uh, we're always looking for boat captains. And we always say, too, that if, you know, if you are interested in joining the club, if you're an angler, uh, the requirements are you need to have a uh, partner and then you need to have a, a boat or a boat captain. Uh, if you can come in with that, that's great. If you don't have a boat, you can still join. We just can't promise because uh, we've got to find you that partner. And then we've got to find you a boat captain. And, and we know people that do have boats, and we try to match you up the best we can. There are no guarantees. Uh, but, you know, you can definitely we basically say we'll get you on a list. And as long as we can find you that that partner and boat captain, 
uh, we can get you in. There's on that website. There's an onboarding process. Um, if you have any questions, you can let us know. It is a affiliation of the Bassmaster. Yep. You know, you think elite and then high school and or elite college and high school. And so, um, anything else you guys want to add before we sign off here? Not really. No. Just... Uh, how about if they want to follow you? So I know you've you've messed around a little bit with YouTube. Yep. And like, uh, and these guys are both working for us now here at Jake's too. So you'll see them working the floors. Don't be afraid to pick their brains. They'll help you out. Um, and it's kind of cool too, because you know we'll get something in and tell Thomas go make a video of it, and he'll take it out and and try it out and make a video. So, but where can they if people wanted to check you guys out online? Where can they follow you? I'm Legit Angler on Instagram, and Legit Angler on YouTube. I don't even know my. <laughs> I've been on <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Yep. Just find follow him. his, yeah. Yeah, follow his and follow Tom. You can find Thomas here at Jake's and uh and so and it is cool too because I know you put some stuff on there, like even instructional stuff on like a polymer knot or, or yeah. a uh, drop shot, I think it was. Yeah. I knew somebody had said, Oh yeah, you know, watch that and I'm gonna use that knot now or whatever. So um and what we talked about again is just another example of just, you know, sharing information and knowledge you know, and fishing the DMV and you can take some things that they said, I learned something new myself, uh, from listening to these guys. And, uh, you know, maybe it's a body of water, maybe it's a technique. Um, you know, you can learn something from, from everybody. So, uh, guys wish you the best of luck at nationals. Go Thank get them. So represent, uh, represent the state of Virginia, represent sure. Frederick County. Oh yeah. And, yep. um, and you got to make sure too. You thank your mothers because it is Mother Mother's Day. Yeah. Sure, have you yeah. all gotten your your mothers anything for Mother's Day? Yeah. Yeah. If you haven't, you can maybe go get her a crankbait or something. <laughs> <laughs> she would not like that. Or a jackhammer, right? She might then borrow it. Twenty five dollars. So, then borrow it. Then borrow it. So, <laughs> you guys follow these guys and uh, Bass Nation, Virginia Bass Nation, I think it is on Facebook too. They usually have uh, live. Uh, footage of of the launches and the weigh-ins and so you can you can follow us at jake's bait and tackle or bass nation virginia bass nation uh to see the results and see how these guys do and um thomas and cam again i thank you for all for y'all oh, coming yeah. on thank you thank you so much sharing thank you. what you know at a young oh, yeah. age and so uh we'll see you next time thanks you're listening to fishing the dmv with your hosts thomas aarons and jared mounts Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.